Mr. Vice President, it's good of you to join Sandra and me this Welcome. afternoon. Really appreciate your time. How would you Thank grade you. the Biden administration's response so far to what Putin is doing in Ukraine? Well, the, uh, the sanctions announced yesterday uh, by President Biden don't go nearly far enough. I mean, literally, you just reported that there are Russian troops in Kiev, bombs are dropping, people are losing their lives at this very hour. And the fact that we have not yet imposed the level of punitive sanctions that would be required, not just to stop Putin's advance, but to get the Russians to ultimately withdraw from of Ukraine is uh, incomprehensible to me. I, I think it's absolutely essential uh, that we that we sanction the entire financial sector, uh, that we cut uh, Russia out of the swift transaction program that is literally a financial lifeline to their country. Uh, I think it's also important that we sanction oil exports. That's the lifeline of the Russian economy. And in addition to all of that, uh, I, I would hope and expect that this administration is finding ways to get more arms into Ukraine to let those proud and strong people defend themselves by themselves. Mr. Vice President, it, it may be shocking for many to know, and we know this to be the case, and we have confirmed this with the White House, we are still purchasers of Russian oil today. We are still exchanging U.S. dollars for Russian oil for this country. I'll ask you this, based on your, your statement just now, that you did not see the president go far enough with the sanctions yesterday. What is the del delicate balance? This is a situation you know intimately. What is the balance that the White House is considering and what would have prevented them from directly sanctioning Vladimir Putin and his oil and natural gas market? Well, I expect a hundred dollar a barrel oil has something to do with it. But look, uh, gasoline prices have risen from two dollars a gallon to three and a half dollars a gallon out here in Indiana and across the country because of this administration's war on energy, shutting down the Keystone Pipeline, shutting down oil and gas leases in this country while they were incomprehensibly green lighting the Nord Stream 2 d deal for the Russians. We need to sanction the oil exports for the Russians. And in the exact same moment, President Biden should authorize the Keystone Pipeline and authorize oil and gas leases and exploration in the United States of America. Those two things in combination would send a deafening message of strength. And I have to tell you, I've met Vladimir Putin. Uh, I've looked him right in the eye, and I can tell you, Putin only understands strength. And now is the time, less, less talk, more action. We ought to be putting punitive sanctions on their economy, including on oil exports. We ought to be demonstrating our commitment to use America's vast energy resources. And in the midst of all of that, uh, not just prayers, but let's be providing resources and material support and weapons to those extraordinary and courageous people of Ukraine that are fighting for their independence at this very hour. You know, just the last hour, there's been a couple of developments in terms of sanctions. Both the EU and the UK say that they will put punitive sanctions on Vladimir Putin and Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister uh, there in Russia. So they've gone a step further. Uh, than uh, the Biden administration has done. But, you know, you talk about oil and gas, Mr. Vice President. Much is being made of a curious statement that was delivered from the podium at the White House yesterday, yesterday by the Deputy Director of the National Economic Council, Dalip Singh, about oil and sanctions. Listen here. To be clear, our sanctions are not designed to cause any disruption to the current flow of energy from Russia to the world. So if the U.S. and the allies do not move to cut off the revenue that Putin is getting from these oil and gas sales and they continue to just suck up as much oil and gas as they can possibly get from Russia, how, how would they ever expect to turn him back? John, that's a line that will live in infamy uh, from the press podium at the White House. I admit, must tell you, let's remember, people are dying right now in Ukraine. Uh, I, I know President Zelensky. He is a good man. He's demonstrating his courage, staying in his capital, standing with his people. And here you have the Biden administration nickel and diming uh, our way forward when we ought to be putting punitive sanctions to, in the immediate moment, not delayed in any way. And we ought to be sanctioning the primary source of revenue for Russia, which is their energy and oil 
exports. You take that action now, not only will you stop Putin's advance, but you keep those in place until the Russian military fully withdraws from Ukraine, because I think it's extremely important to know this is not just about Ukraine. Uh, this is about Putin and Russia's desire to redraw the lines of European countries by force. Uh, I, in my very first year, we saw the most massive deployment of Russian forces since the end of the Cold War along the border of Eastern Europe. I was sent uh, to Estonia. I met with the leaders of Estonia uh, and Latvia and other Baltic nations. We flew the flag. We demonstrated our commitment to them. We trained with uh, soldiers in Georgia. I was in Montenegro. Peace follows strength. Mm -hmm. Weakness arouses evil. And, and this administration needs to take action that demonstrates American strength. And that is the only pathway forward to not only ending the violence, uh, but, but, but making it possible for the people of Ukraine to defend their independent nation. It's just so hard to see these images that continue to come into us there. Uh, the one on your screen from Kiev, um, that is what people woke up to this morning. Uh, many who are sleeping underground in that city. Mr. Vice President, one, two bits of news. Uh, one that is hitting the wires right now on AP, the NATO chief now says leaders have agreed to send in rapid response troops to protect allies near Russia and Ukraine. That is out there and also a new tweet uh, from Zelensky, uh, as you just mentioned. He just tweeted out strengthening sanctions, concrete defense assistance, and an anti-war coalition have just been discussed with the president of the United States. Grateful to the United States for the strong support. So perhaps Biden is about to move and get tougher with sanctions. Well, it's absolutely essential that we continue to stand strong with President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine. Uh, and I welcome uh, Jen Stoltenberg's announcement that NATO is moving troops. I know the U.S. is moving additional troops mm -hmm. into countries that are NATO allies. I, I want to say again, Putin only understands strength. Uh, and and uh, you got to remember, the United States economy is 15 times larger oh than Russia's economy. We have the ability literally to bring Russia's economy to a grinding halt in just a matter of weeks and bring pressure internally uh, on Putin as never before. It's exactly what the Biden administration should be doing. But just as President Zelensky said, we need to be arming the people of Ukraine. We need to be demonstrating our commitment to our NATO allies in the region. And we need to be bringing punitive measures on the entire financial sector, financial transactions, and energy exports. That is the pathway towards saving lives in the short term and achieving the ultimate objective of stopping not just Russia's advance, but forcing Russia's withdrawal from Ukraine. Uh, Mr. Vice President, we've got another big uh, event coming up uh, in about 45 minutes time, maybe a little bit more, when uh, President Biden will announce his uh, choice to replace Justice Stephen Breyer on the Supreme Court. Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson of the U.S. Uh, Circuit Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. I wanted to get your thoughts, first of all, on Judge Jackson, and secondly, the timing of all of this. Why announce your Supreme Court nominee in the middle of a war? John, I'll leave the timing to others, uh, but, uh, you know, let me say I would, uh, I want to congratulate Judge Jackson on her historic nomination. Uh, she is, by all accounts, a, a liberal judge. I think she's the choice of the radical left, uh, but I recognize the historiosity of her nomination. And, uh, uh, you know, I only wish folks on the left would celebrate Clarence Thomas Mm. and the history-making role he's played on the court as much as perhaps this nomination. Uh, but the good news is that uh, uh, thanks to four years of the Trump-Pence administration, we have a solid conservative majority on the Supreme Court following our three justices. The good news is with Justice Breyer's uh, retirement, that will not change the conservative mm -hmm. majority. But uh, I, look forward, uh, I look forward to the Senate doing its job uh, in the nomination process uh, going forward, uh, because every every uh, appointment to the Supreme Court has generational impact on the American people.
Former Vice President Mike Pence, good to get your thoughts today, sir. Thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to join us. We really appreciate it. Thank you both. Thank you very much.